Carl Holder and welcome to the channel. Here's the question. We've got a stage one, stage two, and stage three LS camshaft. Does the smaller cam actually give you more torque? Okay guys, now it's time to take a look at two different cam tests that I ran on similar motors. And what we did was run a stage one, stage two, and three, stage three cam. And on this first one, they all came from the guys at Air Force Research. And we ran this test on a 6.2 liter LS3 combination. This first one had actually airflow research ported LS3 style heads. We ran it with a factory LS3 intake manifold, long tube headers, you know, kind of the way that you'd run it actually in the vehicle. And the important thing here is that a lot of times guys, when they're deciding on camshafts, they think, okay, well, I don't need all the big end, you know, top end charge because I'm not going to be revving my motor out to 7,000 RPM. I don't need the big stage three cam. I'm going to get the smaller cam because that's going to give me a lot more torque. Well, the reality is actually different than that. Now, if we're talking about torque down at 1500 or 2000 RPM, smaller cams will definitely be better there and they'll offer better drivability. But as we see from this test, that's really going to be your choice. You're not going to get more peak torque with the smaller camshaft. In fact, you're not going to get a big change in power through most of the curve with any of these camshafts. You're just going to get a lot more power on the big end. And actually, as we'll see here, you actually get more peak torque from the bigger camshaft. So let's jump right in. We've got our Airflow Research headed LS3 run with a Holly HP management system. And we're gonna run the stage one, stage two, and stage three camshafts. I'll make sure to put the specs up here. But basically we have a 223 intake duration cam. We have a 227 degree intake duration cam. And then a 232 degree intake duration cam, all from the guys at Airflow Research, kind of designed to work with these rec port style heads, especially obviously their end. So our LS3 crate motor, basically, <laughs> excuse me, bottom end with the stage one camshaft and the airflow research heads, stock LS3 intake manifold, as I said, made 561 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 518, uh, yeah, 519 foot pounds of torque. So this is with the stage one cam and again, put the specs up there. Here's what happened when we stepped up to the stage two cam. A little bit bigger camshaft, as I said, 227 degree intake duration as opposed to a 223. And I'll put the rest of the specs up here so you guys can see. Um, fairly big dual pattern cam as is kind of typical with these rec port heads. But as you can see, the bigger stage two camshaft compared to the stage one did add power. It pushed peak power up to 575 horsepower. And the important thing is peak torque was up to 500 and over 520 foot pounds of torque. Not a big jump. But as you can see, the curve from about 3,300 RPM up to 51 or 5,200 was basically the same. I mean, we traded a little bit near 4,500 RPM, but not a lot. But as you can see, you're not going to get a lot more torque from the smaller camshaft. Certain, in, in fact, the bigger camshaft, the Stage 2 camshaft, actually made more peak torque, if that's what you're talking about, and made an almost identical curve even below that point. Now, if we were to run this thing at wide open throttle at 2000 RPM, like lots of guys want me to, we would definitely see that the smaller cam would probably come into play there. So again, that's going to be, have to be your decision. Do I want all the extra power from 51 or 5200 on up? Do I want more of the power from, in this case, 25 or 600 RPM on down, and then also you need to be concerned with your drivability. So that's the stage one and stage two. What happens if we go up even further to the stage three, which is a 232 degree duration camshaft? And again, we'll go ahead and put the specs up so you guys can see all of the specs. And the same kind of thing happened. Once more, the peak torque was highest with a stage three cam. That was 529 foot pounds of torque. And that happened at 4,900 RPM. Peak power was up to 590 horsepower. So again, we're making good power with this combination, Airflow Research headed uh, LS3 style motor with their stage three camshaft. And, and once again, the power below 5,000 RPM, the whole torque curve was almost identical. Now again, and, it, and we didn't run it down low as much, but you can already see that the trend is that the bigger camshaft is going to make less power down low, down below 3,300 RPM because it makes more power on the top. And that's normally what we see. We see a trade-off. We kind of rock the curve a little bit. But through the area where you would be accelerating this vehicle, 
there'd be no difference in acceleration from 3,500 to 5,000 from any of these cams at wide open throttle. And that's the interesting thing. A lot of guys think that, oh, if I put the smaller camshaft in, that part of the curve is going to be a lot bigger with a smaller camshaft. But the reality is actually otherwise. And so in this case, the bigger camshaft is kind of the choice to go with for lots of power as long as, and this is a very important point, that you don't mind the trade-off in low speed power below 3300 and also possibly some drivability, although a lot of that is going to come into play with your tuner. Let's check out our next combo. To illustrate that the test run on the Airflow Research Stage 1, 2, and 3 cams was not a fluke, and this is more the norm rather than the exception, I also ran a similar test with similar three different stage cams. With the Airflow Research stuff, we had a 223 cam, a 227 cam, and a 232 cam. And now I'm going to show you what happened when we ran also on LS3, but with a stock head. We ran a 224, a 227, and a 231, and those are all the um, intake duration numbers at 50. So very similar kind of things, and we got, not surprisingly, similar results. So this was our stock motor. It was a different motor, an LS3 crate motor. We ran it all stock, uh, long tube header and the LS3 intake manifold, a 90 millimeter throttle body. I think it was a, yeah, it was a 90, it was a 90 or a 92. It was a manual throttle body, not the drive-by-wire throttle body. Again, Holly HP management system, just like most of our tests. And run with a stock LS3 cam, it made 495 horsepower and 490, 91 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we added the first of our camshafts. This is the 224 cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up like we do with all of them. We picked up power basically everywhere with this camshaft. It was the crane version and, uh, you know, the specs are, it's a camshaft that I've used a lot. Peak power jumped up to 547, while, while peak torque was up at 514 foot-pounds. Here's what happened when we ran our 227 cam. Again, basically the same through the whole curve, like with the airflow research stuff. Um, and then we just picked up power at the top. So peak power went up to 555. Peak torque was almost the same, one or two foot pounds, maybe a little bit better, 515 foot pounds. And here's what happened when we put our 231 camshaft in. Again, we picked up more power at the top above 5,000 to 5,100 is where it was most prominent. The rest of the curve down below that, except down below 32 or 3,300, we would definitely start to shift power. And if you see, as we gain power on the top from the bigger cam, we lose power down low, down below 3,300 in the same amount. But as we indicated on the test run with the Airflow Research Stage 1, 2, and 3 cams, most of the curve is the same from 3,300 to 5,100. The peak torque number is actually, if anything, a little bit, a little bit higher, a couple foot pounds higher with the bigger camshaft. So even with the smaller camshafts, you're not going to pick up all that torque, except if you're talking about torque below like 3,000 RPM, which for a lot of guys is very important. So you spend a lot of time there. It's just that you're not going to pick up peak torque and you are going to gain more peak power with these bigger cams and at least at wide open throttle through most of the curve where you would be accelerating the bigger cam kind of seems to be the way to go unless and this is a big unless because it's very important for a street driven vehicle the area below 3200 or so rpm is critical for a lot of people and also part throttle uh, is going to be different for these wilder camshafts so there's as we see in most of these cam tests when we run the stuff on the ls there's always a trade-off. But as you can see, all of these cams made more power than the stock cam did uh, through most of the curve. So all of these cams would be a good step up from the factory LS3 cam. Then you just pick, you need to decide, do I, am I more interested in the more peak power from 5100 on up? And am I willing to trade a little bit of power and maybe drivability below 3000 RPM? That choice is yours. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn from this little adventure running the three different camshafts from Airflow Research and then three different other camshafts on our LS3 combinations? We're going to learn the following thing. Different size camshafts. We went from a 223 or 224 to a 227 to a 231. As we go up in camshaft and make the camshaft bigger and more aggressive, we definitely pick up power. 
The interesting thing I thought is that we expected the thing, the bigger camshafts to make more power at the top, and that's exactly what they did in both cases. The interesting thing is that during most of the curve from 3,500 or so to 5,000 or so, we didn't see any change in power. They all produced basically the same kind of torque curve, which is very interesting and contrary to what a lot of people think. They think if I put the smaller camshaft in, all of that's going to increase dramatically and I have a lot more torque there. Well, as we saw, the bigger camshaft actually made the most peak torque, and that's, a, and that's for har hard for a lot of guys to understand. Now, we would see if we started the run at 2,000 RPM, we'd see the smaller cam make more low-speed torque, but not dramatically so. And in fact, you might see them get closer in torque production to the factory LS3 camshaft, but that would be another test for another day. The one rare exception is that we run variable camshaft, and we saw that running the Gen 5 L83, when you run variable camshaft uh, timing, variable cam timing on those, they definitely pick up low speed power. So maybe there's maybe there's hope. Maybe running a variable cam on like a Gen 4 LS could pick up all that lost low speed power. And then we can also have the big charge on the big end. Armature older, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.